I'm Vicky Letch and I've been joined by Ollie Smith. Hello. Hello, Ollie. And I'm rather excited. We're celebrating our newfound friendship. We are. With some bubbles. We're talking wine. And what are we sampling today? Today we're doing fizz. And fizz comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes from around the world. There are some terrific bargains to be had. Obviously, there's also the prestige of yes. champagne. I mean, as soon as people think about fizz, they immediately start thinking of the good stuff. Yes. It's actually something, it's a bone of contention with the Brits, in fact, because supposedly it was actually invented by an English guy called Christopher Merritt. Fizz, this is. Uh, about six years before the French did it, he... When you... Sorry. Yeah. When you say fizz, do you mean just a sparkling wine? A sparkling wine. OK. Which is right. exactly what champagne is. Champagne yeah. is the place, and the, the wine has been named after the place. Right, But okay. this guy, Christopher Merritt, in the 1600s, went off to the Royal Society and said, here's how you put bubbles in wine. And they went, oh, it's brilliant, well done. Six years later, the French went, ah! Bubbles! Bubbles in the wine! Fantastic! We invented it! And they're all German in Are France, apparently. <laughs> didn't want to <laughs> but say they went, But they ran away with it. And, of course, the region became famous. Wonderful stuff. I mean, it is the, the badge of prestige. What we've got here is Paul Roger. Paul Roger. Which is the Champagne house. That's the people who make it. OK. And this is non-vintage, OK? So I'm going to start opening this while I tell and you what non-vintage oh, means. thank you. I was just about to ask you. Non-vintage means that it is a blend of many different vintages. And the reason they do that is to maintain a consistent style, year in, year mm -hmm. out. You can get, of course, champagne that comes from a single vintage, 1999, 2000, whatever it might be. And that kind of champagne ages fantastically well. There's nothing to stop you ageing, for example, a non-vintage, and it does yeah. work to a degree, but if you're going to really go for the good stuff, vintage is the way forward. See, I'd never think to age a champagne because... No? Well, quite normally when I get a champagne, it's open within seconds. Well, hopefully this one will be open in seconds. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> oh, look at that! The sigh, the gentle the sigh. sigh. That's really what you want. When you're opening a bottle of fizz, you want to get that sigh because you, you don't want to lose the champagne, but also you don't want to, uh, you don't want to excite it. It's going to be plenty of excitement <laughs> later on. Don't peak too soon. Don't peak too soon. Now, with champagne, that big fizzy bit that's coming up in your glass is yeah. called the mousse. The mousse? Mousse. Not like, you know, with the antlers. Yeah. Mousse, as in M-O-U-S-S-E. OK. And that can sometimes be something that people go for. People can say, oh, it's got a lovely mousse. And people love it. So that's so something to look for. So the bigger the mousse, the better? Well, not necessarily. What you're actually looking for in fizz, look at the bubbles. They should all be very, very small. The smaller the better. Mine are tiny. Absolutely minute on this one. And they should all be going straight up. You shouldn't have any that are going psh, 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 off the glass. Yeah. Straight up. If you imagine you've got a glass of fizzy water, the bubbles are massive and they're going up all over the place. They're all going for the surface. But this one, they're going pretty much in a straight line. Absolutely divine. And that's a really good way to judge a champagne. If someone gives it to you, have a look first of all. It's actually quite hypnotic. Oh, it's most so mesmerising. It's beautiful. And it's magic as well. These guys... It's a secondary fermentation. All they do is add a bit more yeast and a bit more sugar in the bottle to get these bubbles into the wine. And I'm afraid it's the kind of the last dying size of the yeast, this stuff. It's actually dissolved in the wine. Oh, I know. I but it's so emotional. It's for oh, your well, pleasure. Let's drink it. The three grapes you get in Champagne are generally Pinot Noir, Pinot yeah. Meunier, which are red grapes, and Chardonnay. And red grapes, I know you may think, but they're I wouldn't, red. I wouldn't have thought red grapes. They basically press them really quickly so you don't get any skin contact. So really, really pure, clean juice. Okay. And you've got all sorts of categorizations throughout the Champagne region of certain soils that are better than others, but I think it's all about what's in the glass. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we? Oh, gosh, go, yes, darling. why not, darling? Here we go. Mm. Oh, to us. Um, <laughs> what a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. The well, you're not going to get me to say anything negative about this because I just love bubbles. It's divine. And the bubbles, bubbles in this case, what Paul Roger have done really well, actually, is the bubbles are very creamy. They're not mm. aggressive. They don't hit your tongue like if you have a glass of fizzy water. They're yeah. very, very smooth, very elegant. I think, you know, champagne is absolutely the benchmark of quality in this. But if you are looking for a bit of a bargain, then, of course, Spain produces brilliant sparkling wine, as does Italy. Prosecco in Italy, very, yeah. very good oh, indeed. Oh, I love Prosecco. Light and fruity, can't go wrong with that. English fizz, as I mentioned, has a great future ahead of it. We've got very similar soil to the Champagne region, and we're producing really top quality wine. But Carver in Spain, ooh, yes, I'll yeah. have some of that. Yeah, you, you can, like it? Yeah, I love yeah. it. You can pick it up very, very cheaply. This one here, I absolutely love, which I'm going to tell you about. Wow! That's lively. Wow. That Did even forget that? Did my, we get that? <laughs> my downward force. I've obviously not put my special mechanical claw on to pressure down. This one here is uh, called, I'm not sure how to say it. I asked Marks and Spencers about this and I think it's ochre. Ochre. Or ochre. But this is organic carver, as it happens it's organic, and absolutely beautiful. They fermented this to be so dry, it'll make the Gobi Desert look lush. Ooh, good moose. Yeah, moosey. It's absolutely brilliant. And if you look at this one, you'll notice the colour. Yeah, much lighter than the other one. 
And that's because this one here is much more about lightness, much more about clean fruit. Okay. Perhaps a little, some people might say a little simpler, but I think really divine, incredibly refreshing. Have a look at those bubbles. Same method. Yeah. You can, exactly the same method they use in Carva as they do in the method Champenoise, the champagne method. There are other ways. You can literally do it like a soda stream and inject the bubbles. Yeah. Or you can do various other things, but the best way is that what's called the champagne method or the method traditionnel. And look, tiny bubbles all going up, straight line, classic. I am this one here, blowing bubbles. Champagne, 25 quid. Yeah. This one under a tenner, Brilliant. your choice. Yeah. But have a look, taste, see what you think. Oh, I love that. Really fresh, lemony. Mm. Different grape varieties used in Carver. I like how you linger on the smell. Yeah, woo! Mm. Yeah. Isn't that dry? Clean, it's fresh, crisp? really, really pleasant, actually. It's lovely. The grape varieties they use, they're slightly different. They've used their own grape varieties like Zarello, Paralada, and all these types of things. And they're absolutely divine. I just think Spain has really made Carva absolutely brilliant. The last few years, quality through the rafters, matey. Excellent. I really enjoyed that. I feel a little bit cheeky now. Bit of okay, so to recap, what bubbles have we sampled? We have sampled Paul Roger Champagne, non vintage, delicious. We have yeah. also sampled uh, MS's Okra Carva Nature. Okay, fab. So if you've got a special occasion, or maybe not so, uh, pop to your local wine stores where you can find both bubbles for you. Come back to us, though, because Ollie and myself, should we talk some wine? We must. We'll talk wine. We are compelled. <laughs>